Chris Mon commands Charlie Hooper was recently interviewed on Graham Stephan's Ice Coffee Hour. Welcome back to the Ice Coffee Hour. I am Charlie from Chris Mon Command. And while seeing two of my favorite YouTube creators in a discussion was an instant click for me. I found myself engrossed in their conversation and in particular Charlie's charm and confidence during the interview. So this got me thinking, why is this so engrossing? In this video, I want to share a breakdown of five key lessons I took away from Charlie during the interview and how applying this in my job led to some rather interesting results, with some points being more effective than others and some I would reconsider through experience. So let's take a look at the key lessons, starting with compliment others. The immediate thing that struck me about Charlie's interview with Graham and Jack was how complimentary he was of both of them and their particular individual strengths. While there was clearly a genuine respect for Graham on the real estate market and his financial knowledge, Charlie was very complimentary to Jack for his natural extroversion and ability to build relationships, something that becomes clear to see in the interview itself. So how was Jack's score? Meeting Jack, uh, for, for what could Jack improve So Jack on? and I yeah. have hung out um, now yeah. for a couple hours. No, oh. Jack is, uh, Jack's got it, man. I think some people, it, it comes easily. I, I know, it comes easily to for some people. I actually mm -hmm. think, have you worked at all to try to be more charismatic? I have not. Yeah, you're, you're a natural, honest, honestly. The thing is, giving compliments, and importantly, genuine compliments, is an excellent way to build rapport with people and is something clearly evident in the relationship Charlie had with Jack and Graham. It made for an easygoing conversation, one which felt more relaxed and real than many other interviews that others give. What particularly struck me was how casual the conversation was, and I immediately understood that the reason for this was actually because of something Charlie identified as a useful skill, which is he spoke to Graham and Jack as though they were friends. Treating people as friends is an excellent way to build a relationship and quickly build trust, as through this process you are equally more likely to give off positive signals, for example through your body language, than you would if you were focused on formality. This leads us nicely to the next point, where Charlie had really positive body language. What really impressed me during the interview was how natural Charlie's body language was as he showed confidence, interest and enthusiasm throughout the hour and a half when talking. This stems from the previous point, that he was treating Graham and Jack as friends as opposed to business associates or acquaintances, meaning he would naturally take up a more relaxed posture while talking, making the whole situation seem easier to deal with and make for a more casual and earnest discussion. Jack, Jack has told me that you feel that the YouTube train could run out, and I totally mm -hmm. agree. Watching my ad revenue go from 90... Well, <laughs> oh, wow. Well, say it, say it. You, you're you're there. Place. It's okay. It's a safe place. 90 just... to 30 from December yeah. to, uh, to January. However, whilst the conversation was relaxed, Charlie equally showed an avid interest throughout through his position while seated, often leaning forward closer to the others when talking or listening, giving clear signals that not only was he engaged in the conversation, but he was genuinely interested in the subjects discussed and what others had to say. With this, his eye contact and facial expressions were spot on, keeping regular eye contact with others showing a keen interest and when speaking, he would frequently gesture with his hands and expressions on his face. These skills are fundamental in making for more interesting conversation. As a viewer, I not only felt more interested in what he was saying, but equally felt it to be a more entertaining and engaging conversation as a whole. However, it would be wrong to say it was just Charlie's body language that did this, as we see in the next point, which he had a variety in his tone. I cannot state the importance of using your voice to make for interesting conversation. It's a fundamental communication skill that can be the difference in a listener maintaining focus or losing interest. Charlie constantly shifted between tone and energy when speaking, naturally speaking louder and faster when he was enjoying the topic whilst being a little quieter and more reflective when digesting information from Jack and Graham, especially when he was learning about how to manage his finances and make best use of his income. The tone we use when speaking is a way of communicating in itself, as your tone will generally be perceived by others to have some meaning in itself. For example, when conveying an important message, people generally understand your tone will be a little quieter. Whereas when you enjoy yourself, you will naturally speak louder and with more enthusiasm, as often evidenced by Charlie throughout the interview. This was somewhat in contrast to Graham, who was a little quieter and had less variation, 
usually as he was focused on asking or answering direct questions. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I felt like it does take practice. Mm -hmm. And it, it is something that, well, not, I guess not for everybody, but for me, like the more you socialize, the better you get at it. Yeah. Jack, on the other hand, would often naturally switch up his tone through the conversation based on what was discussed. Now, it's important to note that there is no right or wrong here in terms of different tones of voice each individual had through the discussion, as it naturally showcased elements of their personality and motivation, confirming the point that tonal shifts should be dependent on the circumstance and context of the discussion. That said, Charlie's natural enthusiastic tone fit the interview perfectly, making it both entertaining yet insightful, often with a lot to learn. However, as mentioned, his tone naturally shifted down when he wanted to listen to what others had to say, and this was evidently showing his desire to learn. Quite possibly the biggest surprise in the interview was seeing how many questions Charlie asked throughout the discussion, leading to a natural back and forth and great insight to all the personalities involved. For example, during one point of the interview it wouldn't have been shocking if people assumed Charlie was the interviewer, as he posed numerous questions to Graham both about his living situation and the retail market as well as how to manage his personal finances and investments, giving Graham an excellent opportunity to show his knowledge and expertise in these areas. So what is your, so do you, do you just get joy out of uh, seeing the, the, the pile grow? Like yes. what, why have more? And is, is there an, an enough number for you where it's like, you know what, I'm gonna splurge, I'll just screw it at this point. I am to a certain yeah. extent. Uh, no, I don't look at the whole number. I, I look at like whatever whatever the number is. So let's say it's, you know, a hundred a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, now I could spend three dollars of that. Yeah. So I just spend three percent. Mm -hmm. So whatever that number is, uh, you know, three percent of it. So right now I could you know, I'm really living off like uh, imagine I make like a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. 150. I, I keep it about that. Yeah. So, um, so whatever I earn more is just you no. Know, I increase it three percent. Got it. And so, is that what? Why not spend more? Is it because you don't think it would make you happy, or because you would stress about not saving uh, as both. much? Both. Both. Yeah. I wouldn't be any happier, but mm -hmm. also I would stress Got over. It. It's unsustainable. Like I, I know if I spent more, if something were to happen, I, I can't keep that up. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna even try. I'm gonna stay within my means. Got it. Yeah. It was equally clear during this time, Charlie was effectively like a sponge soaking up all of the information being given to him, almost as if he were a client in a consultancy session. Beyond this making for a more dynamic discussion, it demonstrated a skill that's invaluable in the world today, both in a professional and personal environment. People who are willing to learn are in constant demand, but equally their willingness to learn helps them progress and be fully rounded individuals. Through Charlie's own admission, it was his structured approach to learning that helped him build, grow and improve his relationship consulting business early on in his career, where he would regularly put ideas to the test to see what worked and then look to teach his clients how to utilise this information in their own lives. And this directly points to the last point, which is Charlie showed a lot of honesty and integrity. The fact is, no matter who you are and no matter how skilled you might be in a particular area, you're not perfect and you will have had to develop your expertise in your skills. Charlie was honest and made very clear that he had to grow to develop the skills he has today, both in his interpersonal relationships and in his confidence. He identified that these seemed to come to Jack more naturally, most likely with Jack appearing quite extroverted in nature, whereas for him it was an education process to develop the skills himself, often with some hilarious results such as with over exaggerated eye contact. This honesty is an excellent way to build rapport with others, as you are willing to show greater vulnerability that helps to build more trust with other people. Other examples of this was Charlie's openness to discuss his personal finances, living situation and experience in both his consulting business and as a content creator. Unlike many other interviews I watch, where I admire and respect the intellectual capacity of those speaking, in this interview, Charlie caught my interest as I felt it was a more personal discussion as you might have with your friends. So now that we better understand how Charlie made for such an engaging interview, I thought to apply this myself and I feel it's important to share my experience. I was curious to test out some of what I picked up from Charlie in my professional life and decided to try and see if it would help me build greater rapport with my customers, something I'm generally pretty strong at doing but something I equally feel I can always improve. Now, one fact to note here is that the majority of my client calls take place online today, 
as opposed to the traditional face to face approach that we had in the past. I wasn't sure how much of a factor this would be in my approach, but I was curious to see if I could still get the same benefits. The first thing I noticed was that having positive and engaged body language was universally beneficial, with me finding my clients almost always responding in kind, making it in a sense actually possible to better control the flow of conversation. Maintaining eye contact and using gestures is something that I have always actively done, but what was interesting was that when I intentionally leaned in towards the camera, my clients often did the same. This was rather beneficial in ensuring we maintained focus throughout the conversation, and to ensure that people for the most part maintain concentration, leading to more productive discussions. I was also rather frank and direct in these discussions, being honest in what could or could not be achieved, and this helped in building mutual trust that we were working towards a common goal. The biggest benefit of this approach was actually how it benefited me personally, giving me an almost refreshing sensation and not feeling alone with the weight of responsibility of what I was working on. This liberating feeling actually made it easier to stay focused and have more constructive conversations on proposing solutions, a big win in my book. Maintaining this humble outlook actually helped me naturally seek a better understanding of my clients requirements, as I was often more open to understanding what they were working to achieve, but equally helped set the tone of the meetings, and ensured I spoke to be more empathetic in many cases. Albeit, I had to be clear and direct at other times, to ensure we didn't lose sight of what we were working towards. These are skills I generally apply myself, but here, being more deliberate in my approach was beneficial in getting the outcome I wanted. Where things were a little more unpredictable was actually talking to the clients as friends. I often seek to make for more or less formal meetings when talking to clients as historically, it has helped me build better relationships, where they are more open to sharing views and opinions. However, I find in some circumstances formality is necessary with certain individuals, often those from a more traditional professional background. I believe they feel more comfortable with this, as it helps them tackle problems with a more structured or organised approach, but equally, because it is something they feel familiar given years of experience. Therefore, on the whole, while it worked well to build rapport, I very much feel it's important to factor in the individuals you are speaking to, and the context of the meeting. To be frank, I was very impressed with Charlie during the interview with Graham and Jack, with the others equally contributing to the discussion with their personality and knowledge. Many of these skills are valuable in developing strong relationships both in your personal and professional life, leading towards more productive and honestly enjoyable relationships over time. The one caveat I would add to this is that circumstance plays a significant role, and understanding the appropriate action to take and being adaptable to differing situations is a highly beneficial quality to grow. As a consultant, this adaptability is something I've focused heavily on to get the most out of the projects I work on, and this is often reflected in the feedback I get. However, it's worth learning and developing the skills mentioned in this video, and demonstrated by Charlie on the Ice Coffee Hour, because in doing so, you will grow as an individual and your presence around others will influence their response to be more positive and engaging. If you enjoyed this video and made it this far, I appreciate you watching, and please consider checking out the video on screen now for more.